Namaste. Namaste. Today is day 14 of our time together, so we are two-thirds through our time. This is also a moment to look back and see how we've tuned more deeply into the world of mantras in these two weeks, how we've realized their power, how we've recognized certain ways that we can use them, maybe surprising ways that we can use them and carry them within us, and the realization that really they are our friends, so we can call upon them in times of need and in times of overflow, because I often see the singing and the chanting of the mantras as not a one-way affair. It's not like an asking for something. It's also a celebration of that which is. One thing to remember with the mantras is they don't need to be audible. And this is a real uh, breakthrough for me when I first realized I could carry the mantra without actually verbally chanting it. And this especially helped me during different parts of the night when if I was awake, I could hold the mantra, I could actually focus and do 108 repetitions without uttering a word. And uh, it keeps you so alert and at the same time, it relaxes one. It supports us, these mantra supporters. So don't let a situation occur where you feel you cannot chant the mantra out loud. Hold it with you, always hold it with you in your being. Keep it in your mind, and keep it in your heart. And this is the root of mantra practice. This is where we connect with spirit. The mantra for today is a Tibetan Buddhist mantra and the words are Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Swaha. Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Swaha. Muni means sage, so it's the sage, the sage, Maha Muni, the great sage. And the sage is, in this case, Shakyamuni, the Buddha, the historical Buddha. So the significance that Shakyamuni, the Buddha, was a human being and that's who this mantra is dedicated to, is that he is a reflection of all of us being able to reach enlightenment and liberation. If one human being on this planet realized his true being and realized the oneness of all things, then all of us, all human beings on the planet, have that potential. It's really a celebration of our own Buddha nature. Buddha nature again means our own divinity, which is so unique in every one of us and so perfect in every one of us. Talking about perfect, I used to think that enlightenment meant being perfect and perfect, I thought, meant being no more angry or being always happy, always joyful, always loving. And a few years ago, I realized, wow, we're all different and all these emotions are a spice in life. And the only difference between an enlightened person and an unenlightened person is that there is no fight within. There is only purity, clarity. And these emotions will still come and go, even anger, even frustration. But they will be celebrated as an energy. There won't be any fight. They will be accepted. They won't be judged. They are pure energy. That realization opened a huge door for me because it just made me love me more, just who I am, without trying to change myself to become a perfect being. So in that spirit, let's chant Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Swaha 108 times, celebrating our Buddha nature. Let's close our eyes. Just a reminder to keep our back straight for the duration of the mantra, to breathe easy. And this is one of my favorite mantras as a musician because it's in 7-8 time, which is <laughs> a little more intricate than usual. And uh, we particularly love to to share this in our concerts. Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Swaha. And it has a sense of urgency, this recording and I love this too because it shows me that there's no time to waste that every moment is precious 
and joy. Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Swaha Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Swaha
Stay with your eyes closed, feeling the power of the mantra resonate within our bodies. We can feel the cells being charged by the vibrations of the mantra and by the vibrations of our voice. This is our life energy. Okay. Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste and all blessings to you. Namaste everyone.